Yes, uh, glad to be here. Thank you for uh, inviting me for today's call. Certainly, uh, Medicina <clears throat> has a history in the sense that we have uh, built the company out of uh, what we call the Superkind platform. But let me give you a bit of background in terms of, you know, my training essentially has been in biochemistry, but then I did a PhD in chemical engineering. So after my PhD, the first thing I did was start a biologics manufacturing facility in Canada, which uh, uh, we grew that company into becoming one of the fastest growing uh, companies in Canada. We are profitable from day one. Uh, so that was a you know the, the very first company that I got started with, uh, and eventually sold that company to a British biotech. Uh, it was a really good exit. Uh, we had invested ninety thousand dollars and sold the company for ninety million after nine years. So that was a great uh, a, you know accomplishment. We then went on to start another company or rather became a CEO of a company that was developing a drug for prostate cancer and also for brain cancer, for glioblastoma. That company, we basically took it to a stage where uh, the discovery programs were taken all the way so that they were ready for phase three clinical trials for treating patients with prostate cancer. Uh, and then eventually we had a very large private equity company uh, called Warbuck Pincus out of New York that came in and put a lot of money in the company, moved the company from Vancouver to San Diego. And that's where um, I left the company and started Medicena. Now, what the previous or the company, which was the predecessor company that got moved to San Diego, had another program for glioblastoma. And I thought there was a great opportunity. So in studying Medicina, I purchased that asset from them. Uh, and that basically got Medicina started. And from that uh, program, which was a brain tumor therapy, we then brought in some additional drugs from uh, Stanford University that was what we call the superkind programs. So all in all, we sort of have a cancer-focused company now, uh, or rather immunotherapy-focused company with uh, really exciting programs at Medicina. And that's how basically we sort of got started initially as a private company. We then went public on the Toronto Stock Exchange and then eventually listed on NASDAQ. So that's where we are today now. A really good question. And I think the, the big challenge as we, we see this happening over the past, even if you look at the past three or four decades, there's been really nothing out there to help these patients. First and foremost, glioblastoma is a tumor which is very aggressive. And it is because it's in the brain, there is something called the blood brain barrier that prevents drugs from crossing the blood brain barrier. And therefore, you know, whatever you swallow as a drug or you inject in your arm as a drug for brain cancer, that drug doesn't get to the to the tumor in the brain. And therefore, that's one challenge. The second thing is that brain tumors are uh, cold tumors. By that, I mean, they are not recognized by our immune system. They're sort of hidden. Think of a, a stealth bomber. You know, it's a, uh, a stealth bomber essentially is an aircraft, it's got a coating on the surface, which is electromagnetic coating. So that sort of uh, uh, makes radar impossible to detect that aircraft. Same thing happens with glioblastoma. It's, it's surrounded by what we call a tumor microenvironment, which hides the tumor from our immune system. So it doesn't even know that there's a tumor growing in the brain. And that's where you have this big challenge. So I would say having the blood-brain barrier and this shield protecting the tumor from our immune system are the two big challenges that have not been addressed. The, the program which uh, is specific for glioblastoma is a program called MDNA55 or Bizoxofus. That's a program that we have taken all the way to completion of phase two clinical trials. So this particular program has two parts. This is a drug called MDNA55 or Bizaxo. This molecule has 
a portion that is called interleukin-4. Now, interleukin-4 uh, for brain cancer is some kind of a nutrient. It's a growth factor. It makes the tumors grow faster, essentially. So what the scientists did was they said, well, if the tumor is going to grow faster with interleukin-4, maybe we create some kind of a molecular Trojan horse, meaning that you attach uh, a toxin to interleukin-4. So what happens is when a patient takes the interleukin-4 or when we deliver the interleukin-4 to the patient, the cancer or the brain tumor thinks it's getting nutrients. But in fact, when it swallows the MDNA55 drug, it actually is also swallowing the very potent toxin that's going to kill it. So that is very unique about the, the drug itself. And then that makes it very interesting and uh, the data look very, really encouraging. And the other thing is also this drug, uh, it is administered directly in the tumor. So this is, a, you know, it doesn't have to cross the blood brain barrier. Uh, the patient is uh, in a surgical suite for a brief moment. Uh, a surgeon drills a small burr hole, very similar to what they would normally do for a brain tumor biopsy. They put a burr hole, they put a small catheter, and then they inject the drug into the tumor. It's sort of a one-time administration of the drug. And after the drug has been uh, infused, the catheter is removed, the patient is basically free to go. And while the drug is being infused, the patient is fully functional, fully awake, and so on and so forth. But what we've done is we've done two things, is we have crossed the blood-brain barrier, so now the drug is in the tumor. Uh, it doesn't spread out to the rest of your body, so it doesn't cause all the toxicity issues that you normally would have if you took a pill or the drug, drug was injected in the vein. The third thing is that the drug has been designed so it will only target the tumor cells because the interleukin-4 uh, is only found on tumor cells. It's not being used by, by your healthy brain and therefore only the tumor cells will swallow the drug. The fourth thing that is really important about the drug is that I talked to you about this shield, right? The protective shield that hides the tumor from the immune system. That shield, also relies on interleukin-4 and therefore it takes up the drug and the shield is destroyed at the same time. So this way what happens is the tumor is now exposed to the immune system and essentially uh, the drug has targeted the tumor, has basically removed any protection the tumor has and, and that's how the drug works. So it's a really unique uh, method of treating patients and the data look really exciting. So if you look at impact, I would say uh, the, the patients that we treated in the phase two clinical trial were patients who had already received surgery, they had already received radiation, they had already received chemotherapy and the tumor came back. And these patients have tumors that are now deeper in the brain you can't access the tumor. You can't go back and do a surgery to remove the tumor because it's too deep in the brain. And these patients normally have a very short expectation of survival, typically of six to nine months. So what we were able to show with our drug with one treatment was that we were able to more than double their survival. So instead of a survival of six to nine months, this median survival of these patients were more than 15 months. So we more than doubled the survival of these patients. And in some cases, we had patients who were still alive at three and four years. So really exciting data. That's something you would not expect, particularly in these very end-stage patients.